In order to set up the layout, scroll down, click Theme Settings, and click Layout. Now we're in our layout setting. Our layout setting controls the layout of our entire Shopify store. So, first things first, we see site layout. We have a default site layout and we have different options we could choose from boxed to full width background or just full width. Let's try boxed. So we can see right now that our site changed to be inside of a boxed layout, right? And we see that things are a little bit different. Like up here, where we have our links to our store, we see that it's as if it's inside of a box. We see these two lines and there's these extra sets of space. But as we scroll down, we see some more things. We see that everything within our site, we call that the content of our site, right? All the information that makes up our store, our site, is all in the center, right? The content's in the center. And we have this kind of empty white space on the left and on the right. And we could see it all the way as we scroll down. We see it all the way down. That's what a boxed site layout does. It takes the content, all the information that makes up your site. You see that? Everything um, within your site. And what it does is it takes the content as well as the background, right? Because we see the background has been carried over and there's just empty white on the left and the right. It takes the content, it takes the background, and it centers it, right? It puts it inside of a box, right? So that's what box site layout does. So let's say I make a change right here with my maximum website width. This especially works with boxed items. So if I go and let's say I change it to 1,000, for example, if I change it to 1,000, it changes it. You can see that it actually pushed in a little bit more into the center. It's very subtle, but you can tell that there's been a change made. And that's what, that's what this does. That's what the box site layout does. When you mess with something like the maximum website width, it affects the placement of the items right inside your site. So I'll change it one more time. I'll change it to 800. And we can see that there's been even more of a change made. We can see that this got pushed in more. There's more space on the left and the right. And as we look down, everything has been centered, right? All the way down. To get a better quick view, I'll go here and I'll go to full screen. And we can see without that little side, uh, that sidebar, we can see that everything has been centered, right? Except for the slider but everything else is pretty much centered. And this is what the boxed site layout does. I'll move, I'll go to desktop again so we can get this sidebar back. And that's the overall look. But what happens if we change this back? I'll change this back to 1000. And I'll change the box site layout from boxed to full width background. When we change to full width background, we see that the background is full width, right? So this whole um, header here is full width. We scroll down, but we see that the content is not full width. If we go down, the content's still centered, but the background, if you, before we had white on the left and the, and the right, and this green color was only in the center, but now we see that it's fully on both sides. If I scroll down, I look, you know, these content items are still in the center, but the background gets extended to the left and to the right. That is what full width background does. It takes your background and it makes it full width, but the content items still remain um, centered in the middle of your screen. Let's look at what it looks like on a mobile device. So with a mobile device, there's less screen space, but as we scroll down, the background is still taking up both sides and the items are still centered. All right. So I'll scroll back up to the top and I'm going to go to desktop 
All right, so now let me switch from full width background to just full width. Let's see what the difference is. We can already tell that there's been a difference, right? We can see that our items have literally taken up the full amount of screen of, of, of the screen space, right? So that's our content, remember? So our content is everything that makes up our store. That's the content of our site. And the background as well. The background goes from the left to the right. So full width allows the content as well as the background to go to the left and to the right. It takes up um, the full amount of space on the left and on the right. So we can see it all the way down it does that. So full width, we'll go to the top, full width is our default. What if, well, what if I don't like how something looks like the image and text, right? What if I want to change how this image is set? So I don't want this to be full width. How do I fix that? Well, if I come out of here and I come out of here and I go to this item, right, in our list of items, I can see it right here, image and text. If I click it and I scroll down, I could change this section layout from global default. What it means is it takes up the default, right, of what our site is. So for your site, the default is global default. But remember that whenever we change our layout our, from, from being the default, which is full width, and we change it to, let's say, boxed, the content will be affected. If we change it to full width background, the content will be affected, right? But we can change this section layout for each of the items right inside of our site. And what it allows us to do is have full control. So I can change this right now. Remember, we're still in full width. And that's the default that we're grabbing, which is making this full width. But we can change this and let's say make it boxed. See, and it changes this item to be boxed. What do you mean? Well, you see it's centered the items. Everything else is still full size, but this specific item has been shrunken. We have white space on the left and on the right, and the green is in the center. We don't see the green leaking out to either side. And this is how we're able to customize our layout for each item of our store. So in each of these different items inside of our store, we'll be able to change the section layout to you know, change it as desired. But I'm gonna change this back to full width, or excuse me, I could change this back to global default, so I'll grab the default. But you can mess around and customize it as works best for your situation. So now let's go on to the next setting, the default big element border radius. What does this mean? Well, right here we have this little description. It says big elements, right? Mini cart, container, um, images, and modals, it'll actually apply a border radius or it allows you to round um, the edges. So if I change this, right, move it up, right? If we have any big elements like uh, mini cart container, images, or a modal, we'll see that it will round them. So I'll go up and see if we have any inside of this. You see the images here are rounded. If you can make that out, you can't see it on the white ones, right? Because it blends in with the uh, with the background behind it. But we can see here there's some rounding going on. If I go up some more, you see there's some rounding that happened here because I changed this default big element border radius. So if you like it, you can keep it. If not, you know, make sure that you have your uh, you set up your site to your liking. But we also have the default small element border radius here, right? For swatches, buttons, tags, labels. And right now it's set to all the way, 25 pixels, but we could lower it if we want, okay, as well as increase it if we want, right? We can go down or we can go up. But let's see if we have a swatch, a button, a tag, or a label. I'm sure we are. I'm sure, we, I'm sure that we do, but let me go and look, right? And see, with our button, for example, right here, we see there's rounding, but it's not all the way rounded, right? We see that the edges, show a little bit of square still in them. If I were to bring this all the way to the end, see, if I bring this all the way to the end, I could see the rounding here, right? That's something that we wouldn't have if we bring down this small element border radius, right? So we can play around with it to see what fits best. All right, so now let's look at the default border width. So what does this do? 
The instruction says that it, this defines the global border width of all elements of your site. If your elements don't have custom border width defined, they will fall back to this setting. What does that mean? So if I move it, let's see what it does. I don't see change. So I'll move it back. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to back out of this. I'm going to go to our button theme, right? So let's see if we can change how this button looks. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to scroll down and see primary button. These green buttons here is our primary button. How do I know? Because the primary accent combination is set, which is this green color. If I changed it to, let's say, secondary accent color, then it would switch to this color, right? So the way I know that this is, a this is the primary button is because our primary buttons is set to use this primary accent combination styling, this color here. So what I'm going to do is first go down and make sure that enable custom border isn't on because if it is, let's say I click it, it would add its own border to these items here. Like so it would take on this custom styling, whatever I added in. So I want to make sure this is off. And then I'm going to go up and change this primary button style from filled to ghost. So see, we've now changed our setup. So now when we hover over it, it'll look different, right? When we hover over it, it'll appear. When we're not on it, it won't. It'll just be the text. So I'm going to back out of it. I'm going to go back to layout now. And let's try the default border width once again. I'll move it up. See? Once we change that default border width, it changes this, right? It adds a border around our button. And is it just for these? No. If we go down, we see it changes it for all our buttons, which is really cool and handy. Let me go down. I keep on doing that. Let me go back to the top. Okay, right here. And let's move it all the way. And it adds this thick border because it is all the way. So it adds a border around our elements, just like this button. So it's really cool and a handy feature. So now we have spacing. It's for margin and padding, defines the amount of empty space between the site's elements. This allows your elements to breathe and makes your page easy to navigate. So this is for the spacing of our site, right? The spacing inside and outside. So if we change the space between uh, sections, like if I bring it down, see, we can see how that affected our site. I can already see some changes but we can take a look and see how it affected it. It'll change the spacing of our site. If we increase it, let's say all the way, we'll see some changes as well, right? And it's super useful just to be able to make sure that the elements in our site have the proper spacing and that they fit the way they're supposed to. The layout that we have set right inside of our layout settings also affects the layout all throughout our store. So even if we move from the home page to the product page, it affects that as well, right? So all the different pages we could find within our store gets affected by layout. Thank you for watching this video. Please refer to our help center for more information.